was of the wasteland. My lot is new, my broken down horse and me. Always traveling, going nowhere. Across the plains and o'er the hills go we. When I was young, when I was young, I used to be, I used to be a highfalutin shooting son of a gun out in my own. I loved a gal, I loved a gal. She loved my pal, she loved my pal. So I packed my bag and saddled my nag and then I took to roll. Wanderers of the wasteland My lop-eared mule My broken-down horse and me Now we're only a lonely trio Without a friend We trail along endlessly Three old wanderers of the wasteland My lop-eared mule, my broken-down horse and me Was it that bad, Matt? The cattle didn't seem to mind. Oh, I don't reckon your voice would stampede the herd, but, but don't you get any idea that you'll ever be the singer that your dad was, you know? I know. Or the man, either. Well, you see, Gene... But, you're... Matt, huh? it's your fault. Mine? You didn't raise me right. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. You'd think the sheriff and Gene were kin folks. I reckon at that, they're a heap closer than most kin. We ought to be safe from now on, Sheriff. Yep. Looks like these new-fashioned rustlers don't think you heard worth stealing. <laughs> well, we're mighty grateful to you and Gene there for helping us get them across the Badlands. Oh, forget it. It's part of our job, son. You better take the pack horses with you, Larry. We're heading back to town and won't need them. Hey, Frog. Huh? Give Larry the pack horses. Mm. For the love of Mike, what are you up to now? Well, look. Good detective always watches his rear. And while you fellas are watching the front, I'm watching the back. Yeah, you think I'm loco just because I'm about two jumps ahead of you old-fashioned star packers. Yeah, you're so <laughs> far ahead that you can't even see you. <laughs> Do you know any other range detective that's smart enough to rig up a shortwave radio on his horse? Yeah, it is, all right, if you can only make it work. <laughs> It worked. Station X3 calling station QR9. QR9 is ready. Go ahead, X3. What are you doing tonight, Toots? <laughs> Guess I'm getting some interference from an airplane. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Joe, that airplane noise might stampede him. WXL, calling shortwave station S-72. Heard moving toward Box Canyon. Two riders. WXL, calling shortwave station S-72. Calling shortwave station S-72. Heard moving toward Box Canyon. Two riders. Calling shortwave station S-72. Calling shortwave station S-72. Move refrigerator trucks and equipment into Box Canyon. 
Two riders traveling with herd. Calling shortwave station S-72. Calling shortwave station S-72. Move refrigerator trucks and equipment into Box Canyon. Two riders traveling with herd. That is all. All right, boys, let's go. Turn that thing off, you're gonna have to ride by yourself. Well, now you never can tell what I'll pick up. WXL calling S72. Pick up two pack horses in Box Canyon. They're headed back down trail. Everything else clear. Try to get that broadcast again, Frog. Well, yeah, but I thought you. Try and get that broadcast. Larry and Joe should be in Box Canyon by this time with the herd. And they have the two pack horses. WXL calling S72. Calling S72. That broadcast is coming from an airplane, Matt. Come on, we're heading for Box Canyon. This modern method of cattle rustling is sure making sets out of the ranchers, Jim. They don't know what it's all about. Call it shortwave station S-72. Calling S-72. Three horsemen headed your way. Clear out at once. We better not stop to skin the rest of those bees. Throw them in the truck the way they are. I'm not nervous, are you? Do you want to be caught? No, but I'd hate a lot worse to have people see the yellow streak in me. I don't understand why your brother ever put you on this job. Let the rest of the cattle go and get ready to pull out.
No use following them any further, Sheriff. They got too much speed. Yep. Let's take a look at that hombre we shot off the car. Stranger to me. You boys ever seen him before? No. Ah. Well, I admit I... I don't know which way to turn him. Guess they're too smart for me. Maybe I... I am getting too old for this job. Forget it, Matt. I'd like to shove this paper right down that editor's throat. Oh, what's the use, Gene? He's right. I've fallen down on the job. If the county would only give us modern equipment to work with, we could get results. Can't catch high-speed trucks and airplanes with a horse and buggy. Sheriff Donovan and his method of enforcing the law belongs to the past. Both are outmoded and should be replaced. Should they? Maybe I'll prove that an old-fashioned sheriff can get a new-fashioned wrestler. I'm going to check up on the meat-packing trucks. Hi, boys. That new editor. Got a lot of nerve, and I'm going over and tell him so. Well, hey, wait a minute. Maybe I better go along with you. He might be bigger than you are. You get the horses ready. We're going to look the packing houses over. Where's that editor that's been writing those things about Sheriff Donovan? Why? Because I'm going to poke him in the nose. All right. Go ahead and poke. I'm the editor. Well, I'm sorry. You've been printing some pretty mean things about the sheriff. The truth is frequently unpleasant. You've been unfair. Have cattle been stolen? Have the thieves been caught? Is rustling still going on? Very well, then. The courier prints facts. I'm sorry. There goes tomorrow's editorial. A little more dirt won't hurt it. Will you get out of here before you wreck the place? You sure are a hard-headed girl. Who is that clumsy goose? Well, that's young Autry, the sheriff's head deputy. He's a mighty fine fellow when he's not riled. Besides, he's a mighty sweet singer. That should be a big help in his work. Well, I've got to cover the Larson christening. I'll be back later.
our duty to keep an eye on strangers. I'm beginning to understand why the sheriff can't get results. Maybe we'll have some news for you before long. What are you going to do? Give a concert? That's not a bad idea. Hey, Frog. Oh, the West ain't what it used to be. Wild and woolly and full of fleas. Now we live a life of ease. Oh, the West ain't what it used to be. Once the West was rough and tough before the gals used powder puffs. Now they're using roots and stuff. Oh, the West ain't what it used to be. There's a new deal in the West today where the antelope used to play. I met a deer this very day. Now the West ain't what it used to be. There ain't much left of the West no more. The cowboys all turned through the door. A gal I know is an editor. Oh, the West ain't what it used to be. Now the West will never be the same Since the cowgirl editor came She will make it safe and sane Oh, the West ain't what it used to be There won't be room for both of us If she starts to make a fuss Cause I'm an ornery cowboy cuss Oh, the West ain't what it used to be Oh, do oh, oh, do oh, do oh, do You might sing them to sleep. Now that's gratitude for you. Hello, Shannon. Hi, Gene. Glad to see you. Thought Frog and I dropped by and looked your plant over. Uh, certainly. Where do you want to start? Oh, I guess we might as well look through your trucks. I found it, Gene. You found what? Blood. All over everything. What do you expect to find around a packing house? Milk? Say, that's some fine looking beef. Yeah. Where'd you get it? Bad slaughter. Where are the hides? What are you trying to do? Pin something on me? Every packing house in this county is under suspicion. All trucks hauling butchered beef have to bring the hides in with them from now on. That's all right with me, Autry. It's about time you and that has been sheriff did something. Now, where are those hides? Hi, uh... Well, I suppose Slaughter has them. All right. I'm going over there, and they better be there. And if they're not, I'm swearing out a warrant for both of you. Come on, Frog. Hey, Fred, come in. I'll call my brother. You stick around and keep an eye on things, Frog. I'm heading for Slaughter's Ranch. Jim, come here. Beat it to the warehouse. We've got to put Slaughter's brand on some fresh hides and get him to his ranch before Autry shows up there. But it'll take too long, Jack. Fine, Matt. Get the truck and get started. I'll phone the warehouse to have the hides rebranded and ready. Come on, get going.
Is he hurt pretty bad? Oh, not much, I guess. Just a shoulder wound. We've got to get him to a doctor. Where have you been? Oh, I've been on a cook's tour of Wyoming. I got locked up in that refrigerator truck and cold. Well, boy, I nearly froze my eye teeth before I pulled a Houdini and got out of there. Say, you know the driver of that refrigerator truck is the one that plugged the sheriff? Did you... Did you get a look at him? Well, I didn't get a very good look at his face, but I'd remember his clothes again. He had on a calfskin vest and a dude hat. Am I sure? Why, the great millhouse never makes a mistake. <laughs> Come on, give me a hand. Oh. Take it easy. <laughs> Little... Here you hide, Stan. Unload him, boys. The sheriff just tried to stop me, and I plugged him. Did you kill him? I don't know. Before I could find out, Gene Autry showed up. Not only that, but Frog Millhouse was hiding in the truck. He jumped out the door when he saw Autry. Did Frog see you find the shot? He couldn't have. He was inside, and I was in the cab. Take one of these horses and lead it back to town. We'll have to frame an alibi. I'll phone your brother and tip him off. just shot the sheriff. We can't take any chances on his squawking. Get this truck back to the plant and I'll meet you in town tonight. Jack's been trying to get hold of you. He wants to see you out at the plant right now. Okay, Steve. Well, here comes the doc. Hey, look. There's the armory that shot the sheriff. You haven't got anything on me, Autry. Oh, no? Get on your horse and get going. All right. You better come clean, Jim. Why did you shoot Sheriff Donovan? I didn't shoot him. Listen, the sheriff and Frog both identified you. Now, why don't you be smart? If you turn state's evidence, I'll see that the court lets you off easy. You're only out, young man. Otherwise, if you're found guilty, I'll give you the limit. You haven't got anything on me, I tell you. All right, lock him up, Stubby. He'll change his mind by morning. Release that boy. I'll put up bail for him. Bail hasn't been set, Shannon, and won't be before his preliminary hearing in the morning. Why, this is an outrage. You've no right to hold him. I suppose this is some of your smart work. You're a good guesser. Now get out. Yeah. You can speak your little piece at the hearing, Shannon. In fact, we're going to ask you to do a whole lot of talking. I'll be there. And I'll be back here later on with an attorney. 
There's no law against my brother having someone to defend him, is there? All prisoners are entitled to legal counsel. Come on, take him out. No wonder that hombre's scared, but I'll bet his kid brother cracks on the witness stand or I ain't a foot high. Now that that's settled, I think I'll go over to the newspaper editor and see if she's interested in a real story. Well, I'll have a full confession for you when you get back. Get him out? No, they won't set his bail until tomorrow. But I've got to get a lawyer. What if the kid squawks? Don't worry. He knows I won't let him down. Tell me, it's Mr. Autry. Hey, I've got a great story for you. This story, by any chance? Ah, scooped again, huh? You spelled my name wrong. Do you work late every night? In that case, I'll have to learn to cook. Jacob Snodgrass is to be congratulated over the birth of twin calves. I congratulate Jacob. Go away. Listen, what you need is a little music. A very little music. It's mighty soothing. Now what would you like to hear? Your last goodbye. I like that one. I picked up the trail when I found you. I picked up the trail to your heart. My heart sang a song when you came along. Cause I knew you belong from the start. I followed you to the crossroads. You go your way for a while, but you come back to the crossroads after you've traveled a while. I picked up the trail when I found you. I picked up the trail to your heart. That was lovely. It sounded a lot better outside under the moon. Yes, or you wouldn't be disturbing anyone. Yeah, just as Miss Helen said. You ought to be singing on one of them radios. <clears throat> I'm ready for that lead article. Oh, yes, I had it here just a minute ago. What did you do with it? Is this it? Why, why you belong in a kindergarten or a padded cell. Now, get out of here. Yes, Get out. I'm going. Boy, oh boy, can I get sweet music on this radio. Uh-oh. Now, ain't that nice? Wait here, Jack. Keep your eyes open. Hey, Jim. Jim. Gonna spring me, Thad? Yeah. Brought lawyer Carson over here to talk to the kid. Oh. Well, I reckon there ain't any objection to that, Shannon. No. Up the wrong tree. 
Your brother was probably killed by some rock. Don't try to kid me, Autry. He would have been released in the morning, and you knew it. something new and cattle stealer. Now, they ain't none of us got any personal feelings against you. Well, but maybe you're getting a little too old to handle things. So we sort of thought it might be better to bring in some criminal experts from the East. Maybe some outsider like the Quackenbush Agency. I understand. When the new men arrive, I'll turn in my star and me and my boys will step out. No hard feelings, I hope. No hard feelings. Well, come on, boys. We got work to do. Mr. Mr. Uh, Quackenbush, as mayor of Prairie Junction, and on behalf of the citizens and ranchers, I hereby present you with the key to the town. Thank you. Thank you. Your enthusiastic welcome overwhelms me. Mr. Yes. Quackenbush, will you say a few words to the ranchers listening in? Why, certainly. Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Quackenbush. I want you to meet Miss Morgan. How do you do? And shake hands with our retiring deputy, Gene Autry. How do you do, How sir? do you do, sir? And Frog Millhouse. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> I'm sorry to take over your jobs, boys. Well, that's all right. I hope you get better results than we did. Hmm. I've solved far more difficult problems, my boy. Mr. Quackenbush, please say a few words to our listeners. Certainly. Pardon me. Pardon me. My friends, ranchers, and citizens, I deem it a great honor to have been chosen to bring law and order to Prairie County. My aides are all trained in scientific criminology. They are brave, brilliant men whose past record speaks for itself. Under my generalship, they have solved crimes that have baffled the police departments of all nations. And I promise to rid this part of the country of outlaws and rustlers. In fact, the news of my men and I being here in Prairie Junction has probably caused half of them to flee in fear of their lives. Remember, my friends, the Quackenbush motto is bad news for bad men. I thank you. You've just heard Eustace P. Quackenbush, nationally famous detective and head of our recently organized Crime Prevention Bureau. And now I'm going to call on Frog Millhouse for a little impromptu entertainment. How about it, Frog? I'm going to sing a little song for you what'll fit the occasion. It's called The Defective Detective from Brooklyn. I'm one of the smartest men you ever saw. I taught Charlie Chan all he knows about law. A criminal expert and quick on the draw. Leap boy, chubby, chop suey, the defective detective from Brooklyn. No one ever knows me when I will disguise. The difficult clues are a cinch for my eyes. The thin man's my stooge and there's none who denies. I'm it, the defective detective from Brooklyn. When it comes to crime prevention, I really am no fool. I took a dozen lessons from a correspondence school. When robbers start robbing, they find they're soon outwitted. In fact, I solve a lot of crimes before they are committed. <laughs> now, Hawkshaw was dumb and a trifle uncouth, and old Sherlock Holmes was an amateur sleuth. The greatest of all, well, I'll tell you the truth. Are you there, Watson? The defective detective from Brooklyn. Hello, Bidwell. You don't seem to be worried about rustlers bringing all the boys to town with you like this. Why should I be? With Mr. Quackenbush on the job, my worries are over. <laughs> Will you excuse me a moment? I have an important telephone call to make. Certainly. There's not a cowboy left on the range, Gene. They're all waiting for word from you. 
That's fine. I've got a hunch we won't be disappointed. Hey, Frog. Get going. Have you got everything, Stubby? Yeah, but of all the loco ideas. Oh, shut up. Let's get out of here. Now I'm going to ask the retiring chief deputy, Gene Autry, to say a few words. Thanks a lot, folks. Speeches are not exactly my strong point, so maybe I'd better sing. I'm dedicating this number to a man we should all be mighty grateful to. You old timers remember about 30 years ago, this town was plenty wild. Gunfights took place in this very street that claimed the lives of my folks and some of yours. Then a young fellow named Donovan was elected sheriff. He didn't have much equipment, just his guns and his nerve. He still carries the scars of those battles, but he made this a place where decent folks could live and raise their families. And that's why I'd like to dedicate old Buckaroo to Matt Donovan. You've hung up your boots and saddles. You're through blazing trails, buckaroo. The sun's in the west. You've earned peace and rest. After all you've been through, buckaroo. Oh, Buckaroo, you're weary. Oh, Buckaroo, you're tired. Oh, Buckaroo, your riding days are through. Oh, Buckaroo, goodbye. Dream of the days on the prairie. Dream of a new heavenly rain. When Gabriel calls, you'll be ready. You're waiting for the change. Buckaroo, you're weary. Oh, Buckaroo, you're tired. Oh, Buckaroo, your riding days are through. Oh, Buckaroo, goodbye. I'm sure we all agree with Gene Autry when we think of the many years of unselfish service given us by Sheriff Donovan. Calling shortwave station S-19. Shortwave station S-19. Calling shortwave station S-19. Bidwell riders are all in town. Investigate. We'll await your report. Shannon. Shortwave station S-72. Calling shortwave station S-72. Move equipment to Bidwell Range. We'll report back to Chief Collins. Everything okay? Keep in touch with you. Collins. Smart detective, Frog. But this dressing up like a cow is carrying things too far. Well, this way we can mingle with the herd and that scout plane can't spot us. The thing that makes me sore is that I didn't think of it first. What if we get rustled? You got the daggonest imagination. 
Put these on, stupid. I'm a rare to go. You all set, Stubby? You said it. But what's going to happen if we have to get out of this hide in a hurry? Well, I never thought of that. But don't you worry, old Frog Millhouse ain't the kind of a pal to let you down. I hope you're right. W9JR calling Gene Autry. W9JR calling Gene Autry. W9JR calling Gene Autry. Come on running over to Bedwell's ranch. I'm going with you. Nothing doing, Matt. You stay here and keep in touch with Frog. Raiding your ranch, Bidwell, just as we expected. Get your boys ready. Here, your motors, man. I'll take one of your men, Bidwell. You go, Tim. Come on, make it snappy. Come on, boys. This is Gene Autry calling all cowboys. Calling all cowboys. Go to Bidwell Ranch at once. Rustlers headed that way. Calling all cowboys. Calling all cowboys. Rustlers are raiding Bedwell's ranch. Go there at once. Gene Autry calling all cowboys. Calling all cowboys. Go to Bedwell's ranch at once. Rustlers headed that way. Calling all cowboys, calling all cowboys. Wrestlers raiding Bidwell's ranch. Go there at once. Gene Autry calling all cowboys, calling all cowboys. Go to Bidwell ranch at once. Wrestlers headed that way. Calling all cowboys, calling all cowboys. Shortwave station S72. Calling shortwave station S72. Abandoned trucks and equipment. Bidwell ranch attract. Calling shortwave station S72. Gene Autry was right. Well, whatever. You know too much. You're going with me.
Sheriff, and step out. Almost the last one of your gang, Shannon. For your information, that airplane of yours will be picked up as soon as it lands. Looks like pretty good teamwork for a couple of old timers, eh, kid? <laughs> we are wanderers of the wasteland. My lot is new, my broken down horse and me. Always traveling, going nowhere. Across the plains and over the hills go When I was young, when I was young, I used to be. I used to be a high-flying son of a gun out in my own. I love the gal. I love the gal. As a detective, you'd make a good bartender. I took a wonderland. My lop eared mule, my broken down horse and me. Thank you.